Hey everyone, welcome to today, to Hope For Our Times Live In. Uh, we have a great program today. I have two guests on today, and uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. From Prophecy Pros, joining me is Jeff Kinley and Todd Hampson. And please uh, welcome them. Great to see you guys. Tom, great to, to see you, you brother. as well, brother. This is great. So I think this is the first time we've actually had three on at the same time. And it's looking good, and we're going to have a really good time. And uh, we're all busy. You guys are all over the map. We're going to be joining each other here in a couple of days in Orlando. Uh, looking forward to that with a bunch, of other, a bunch of our other colleagues. But there's so much to talk about. And, I, I mean, there is bad news from... It's like everywhere you look, you know, look in the news today, go, it's like OEV, but what, let, let's, let's, just, let's just get away from all that for a few minutes. Because I think people, let, let's put the right perspective on everything. Um, what do you see, um, get away from all the bad news, because these fear mongers are out there called the media, mm -hmm. called the World Economic <clears throat> Forum and everyone else. Let's just take it down the path to help everybody see what we really need to see. So uh, which one of you guys wants to start? <laughs> oh, I'll jump ahead, in Jeff. here, Tom. Yeah. Here's the thing that Todd and I love to say at our, at our conferences is that Bible prophecy never produces fear. It only builds faith. And the more that we study it, the we don't become more afraid of what's going to happen or what is happening. We become more emboldened. We become more courageous. Uh, we become uh, more filled with confidence because we know not just how the story ends, but how we can navigate the times in which we're living right now. So we're seeing some great positive things happening uh, really all over the country. I mean, we're Todd and I are traveling, seriously, New York to, to Miami to Washington State, all the way to, to Maryland and Baltimore. So God is really beginning to raise up a remnant of really people that are excited about what's mm -hmm. happening. Uh, that is cool. So you're all over the place. So these are people that are, uh, I'm guessing, you're kind of experiencing similar things to what I am. A lot of them may have been part of the church before, but it's like they've woken up to the reality of what's going on. Um, not fake church or anything like that, but wait a minute, things really are happening the way the Bible says it would. Mm -hmm. hey, I've got my life right with the Lord. I'm back with the Lord. I'm on fire for the Lord, but Jesus is coming back and I want to learn everything about that that I possibly can. Are, are you guys experiencing uh, anyone like uh, atheists and agnostics that, are, that I would say are waking up also? Uh, I haven't personally bumped into anything like that, but the one really encouraging thing that we're seeing in all those places that Jeff just mentioned is people from from all kinds of cultural backgrounds uh, and all ages are waking up to prophecy, especially millennials with children and Gen Z. Uh, this last uh, pop up conference we did, it was full of young people. We, we were just actually the last two we did were full of young people, and um, we were just blown away at how hungry they are. It's almost like you know, putting on those those infrared goggles and they're seeing the Bible, the depth of scripture for the first time, and people are hungry. You know, they 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 I think they see some of the emptiness of church culture for the past 20 years that's been great about reaching people, but not really teaching very deeply. And I think people are hungry. And now that they see the instability in the world, it's like God just has a wide open door of ministry for us to point people to Jesus because of that. Yep. Uh, amen. So we, I, I'm looking at the instability of the world and everything that is that is happening. Um, I, Jeff, you know this. I've got all kinds of prophecies that you and I have talked about before, and one of the major signs. I mean, there's just tons of different signs that the Bible gives us. One of them is fear of things that are coming upon the planet. Uh, when you as you start to put that into perspective. How much would you say that has become a factor right now? Well, uh, Satan is a master manipula excuse me, manipulator, and he knows that fear is an incredible motivator. And so if he can persuade people to be overcome with fear, and really it's not so much fear of what actually is happening, it's fear of what could happen 
or fear of the future. And so those two things are really becoming uh, sort of the the whip that Satan is using uh, to to beat the world into shape, to groom the planet uh, for the next crisis that's going to happen. And uh, his minions are doing his bidding through governments all over the world. And they're persuading people to uh, basically say, trust us, we'll take care of you because the big bad wolf is out there and we'll call it climate change or COVID or whatever, some you know crisis that's out there and we're here to save you. And it's amazing how many people fall prey to that thinking that they can't really think for themselves, investigate for themselves. They've trusted the, the mainstream media or the government all of their lives. And now all of a sudden, uh, they're being sucked into this this vortex of fear, Tom. And it's what, it, what we're seeing is, is that the body of Christ is beginning to, to kind of polarize in the sense that there are people saying, hey, I need to follow what the world's telling me to do. But you've got, again, this remnant over here saying, you know what? I'm being pulled towards Christ, towards his word. Mm-hmm. And more and more, my feet are feeling more so- like they're on solid ground. And mm-hmm. as Todd said, I mean, that's the thing that, that we're seeing right now. And so with all the negativity, there's also so much positivity spiritually speaking. And it's almost like this, Tom. It's like, you know, I became a Christian in the mid-70s, right on the tail end of that Jesus movement thing that was happening out there where you all are. And there was so many aha moments, so many eureka moments spiritually as you're discovering things about God that you've ne- never known before. And that's what you're seeing. That's what we're seeing all across the country is that believers are waking up and saying, I didn't know that was in my Bible. Yeah. Isn't that amazing, Todd, that, you know, you look at this, you're thinking, you know, you've been going to church and people didn't even know it was in the Bible. What, how, how many prophecies there actually are in the Bible about the days just before Jesus returns that are in there? But it's really, they just haven't been taught. The whole counsel of God's word hasn't been taught. Yeah, that's so true. And I mean, where there's biblical illiteracy, there's also susceptibility to false doctrine and all kinds of other stuff. So it's it's i don't know all the causes but it's just weird to me that for like i said the past 15 20 maybe even 30 years churches have been shying away from teaching about you know the fundamentals of of uh creation you know and revelation we we we, everybody wants to know their origins and their destiny and the enemy has gutted those from the church so now that it's people are looking for those answers and they're discovering what's been in scripture all along their minds are blown. Um, you know, I mean, I recently did a book where I did a bunch of research cataloging the, the the percentages of prophecy in each book of the Bible, just to show people it's not just in Revelation or a couple places in the prophets, but literally every book in the Bible, except for Third John and uh, uh, Philemon, has prophecy in it. So you can't get away from it. It's if you're going to read Scripture and study it from cover to cover, you're going to bump into prophecy, and it's honestly the most encouraging thing there is because. Fulfilled prophecy proves that God's a promise keeper. And even though things are unstable right now, that proves that we know we can trust him for all the things that he promised that are in our future. And that's the hopeful message of Bible prophecy. And it's funny how the very thing that's been seen as scary for the past, you know, couple of decades is now the very thing that's giving people hope and answers. So that's an encouraging thing. And it's not a broad scale, but when you see it in a small church, you know, several times over, I mean, in the past maybe six weeks, Jeff and I have personally seen that in, in five or six different places in the country. So it's really encouraging. And uh, we, we, those of us who study prophecy and have been watching the times and the, the signs and everything developing, it's encouraging for us to see that. So I think we need to seize the moment. And I think God has positioned us for this moment. Amen. You know, it's, it's kind of funny in a way. You, you look at Bible prophecy and the things that we've, all three of us have taught for years, and we would have been labeled by many people as just a conspiracy nut or whatever, at least I know I was. I don't know if you guys were. But, <laughs> you know, now these things are all coming about. I mean, I, here, I, this is just some of the things that are, just some of the prophecies that the Bible does tell us, that there's gonna be this, 10 kingdom empire at the time of the end. And we hear these globalists talk about that. There's going to be a global economic system, a global Mm -hmm. political system. There'll be instant communications, the ability to control individual commerce, uh, fear, which we already talked about. The organized church will turn away from their faith. Uh, People Mm -hmm. that have attended church will mock Bible prophecy. 
there'll be rise in anti-Semitism. Uh, there'll be significant hatred of Christ followers as we go closer to the end, AKA persecution. Uh, those who don't want to know these things, Daniel says the wicked will not understand, but the wise will see it and, the will yeah. un- and they will understand. Um, <clears throat> we know there's going to be a temple built. What do we hear? We hear talk about that now. Jesus said there will be wars, there will be rumors of wars, there will be earthquakes in various places, there will be pestilences, plural, lawlessness would abound. I mean, you just start listing these things. The love of many would grow cold. People mm-hmm. be given over to uh, a reprobate mind. I mean, these are this is just a small portion of them, and there's you you can't say these are just coincidences. The Bible just happens mm-hmm. to be a hundred percent right all the time. <laughs> well, that's yeah. just a coincidence. There's just no way. Right. Yeah. 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 It sort of begins with people saying, "Well, that that's conspiracy," and then when they start to get a little bit more enlightened and a little bit more open minded, they go, "Well, that's a." incredible coincidence that is happening so many times, just like the Bible said, but then you have to eventually land. It's not coincidence. It's convergence. Mm -hmm. It's God's word really converging like these little tiny tributaries leading into one mighty river of God's end times prophetic narrative. And I'm telling you, we're in that river right now. And we're mm-hmm. going down the rapids, you know, as we go. We know Christ is going to come and, and rescue us before this thing goes over the, the waterfalls. But uh, but you know what, Tom? It's it's the most exciting time to be alive in mm-hmm. 2,000 years. I mean, the early church had that sense of anticipation. They expected Christ to come back in their lifetime, and which is why Paul had to write things like First and Second Thessalonians. But you know what? Now we're actually seeing these things come together. And that's why it is, as Todd said, it's the golden moment for Bible prophecy, for evangelism, for growing in your faith, for preparing ourselves for the bridegroom. Amen. The golden, the golden moment. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm going to throw a news item out here. So this is just bizarre, but I mean, it just speaks to all of this. Uh, this, this article was out of Breitbart. Vatican newspaper urges Catholics to fast from fossil fuels for Lent. I mean, the absurdity of, of mm. these things. So you got religion in here. You got the worship of creation in here. You, you, you start and, and put upon the people in a very manipulative way and very, I mean, this is, a, this is a big psychological game that's being played because I was raised Catholic. I remember Lent. Mm. I remember saying, um, I'm going to, for Lent, my mom would get so mad at me. I hated lima beans. We never ate lima beans. I'd say, I'm going to fast from lima beans for six weeks of Lent or however long it was, or, or peas, because I didn't like peas. And she, ah, that's not what this is about. But I mean, yeah. it was very manipulative in that sense, especially now when you look at it and they're saying, fast from fossil fuels. In other words, you, you shouldn't be having those things. Very bad if you're really, if you're really right with God. You're, you're not going to drive a, a car that uses gasoline anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they realize that in order to put those ashes on your head, you have to burn something. That's that's you know, that's, that's a great point. <laughs> and, uh, maybe we should give up Lent for Lent. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, no kidding. And, Go ahead, Todd. I was going to say what's really interesting is a lot of people don't don't catch the final phrase in that Second Timothy three passage about mm. there'll be dangerous times in the last days. The le- after all those characteristics, the last thing it says is. It will have they will have the form of godliness but deny its power that's exactly what we're seeing with a situation like that oh we are i'm glad you mentioned that because i was thinking mm-hmm. um not only do you have I, I think there's a fake church movement going on within the protestant world but also mm-hmm. another thing that is happening along the lines of lent in being catholic you're there's a lot of emphasis coming on Lent from Protestant churches. It's just, I think it's, mm-hmm. it, it conveys some kind of, <clears throat> some kind of false righteousness um, mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's a religious, yeah. uh, um, gosh, I'm trying to think. I mean, I used to do these things all the time. You know, mm-hmm. it was, it was constantly, it yeah. was, you know, when we would go to church yeah. as a Catholic, it was stand up, <clears throat> kneel down, the sign of the cross, all these different things you would do. There was, this piety that was in there that would make you feel like you were doing right. something. But the Protestant church, I keep noticing these these pastors out there that are posting things about the, these Catholic traditions. 
Right. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe just yeah. makes them feel better or something, but it's a religious no. thing. <clears throat> I think it probably does make him feel better. In fact, uh, that's exactly what Paul was writing about in Colossians chapter two, when he spoke about people observing certain days, you know, as to be religious and to be more spiritual than other people, external measurements to determine how spiritual you are. But as Jesus told us in Mark chapter seven, everything that is that is good or bad comes from within. You know, the, the bad in, in mankind comes from this. It's not something on the external. So Paul made it very, very clear that those external duties, those extras that you add to your life, he says they really look good in Colossians 2. He said they have the appearance of wisdom in self-made religion, but he says they are of no value of the, to the flesh. So all these things that we do externally or that people are doing and adopting from uh, these liturgical traditions from the Catholic Church— cannot have any impact on the heart. Now, the heart can be engaged in something like that, but those external things can't make us any more godly or like Christ. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's great. Uh, speaking of trying to be godly from the <clears throat> external things, uh, well, Leslie Dutton says, touche, Jeff. Um, mm-hmm. Somebody else on here some said, my best friend in high school fasted from chocolate, apparently, during Lent. Um, Listen, there's some things I won't fast from. I won't fast from ribeye steaks. I'll gladly fast from vegetables, though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> my uh, my wife asks me Daniel almost fast. every night. What? Yeah. That, that's the opposite of the Daniel fast. Oh, opposite. Right. My, yeah. <laughs> my wife asks me almost every night, do, do you want some <laughs> salad with your dinner? I'm like, what for? I mean, what's, what's the, just going to take up space that I want? <laughs> the, the cow already ate the salad, so yeah. we could eat the cow. Let's, and get the salad for free. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> good, good friend of mine used to have a T-shirt that said, thank you, pigs, for turning grass into bacon. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, pigs are good at turning anything into bacon, what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's very That's true. true. So this, this, here, here's <laughs> another article. And, and Oh, by the way, everybody, we had a little bit of a glitch uh, today, so we got started a few minutes late. And... Uh, uh, but if you want to chat, you got, just got to create an account or whatever it is. Just Basically, it's your email address, and then you're able to enter into the chat instead of uh, uh, just watching. Just want to watch. That's cool, too. Um, uh, we will all be at Prophecy Watchers Conference this week in Orlando. All three of us will with a bunch of other guys. And mm-hmm. I know the conference is sold out, but you can go to uh, the link in the events page at <clears throat> Hope for Our Times, and also Todd and Jeff, you can, you can get there to the conference that way. Click on it, and it'll take you to uh, being able to register to see um, online, to watch everything. It's going to be live streamed. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a, yeah. uh, going to be a uh, great time. Okay. All right. Let's go. Here's another article. Down, this is from Harbinger's. Downright demonic Canadian government calls lawmakers to legalize euthanasia for children mm. without parental consent. Mm. Yeah, that's, mm. yeah, I, I, we're just watching this. I, I would say um, these demonic things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Sam Smith at the Grammys a couple of weeks ago, this yeah. worship the devil service. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and all these bizarre things. Uh, but this is a, this is a demonic thing. Um, mm-hmm. Euthanized children. And there's so mm. much uh, to, pressure against kids now from the transgenderism um, to the things that are already being taught within the schools. We have abortion. Satan hates kids. And we are seeing them. It's almost like now, you guys, it appears to me, okay, if they, if we can't abort kids, if some families insist on having kids, we're going to get them another way. So that's, it's taking this other approach. And it's, it's disturbing how many parents just go along with this type of mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I saw an article today about uh, the, the a new report came out that the, the percentage of believers in the West with a true Christian worldview has dropped to, I think it's four or 6% now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's even lower than it's ever been. And with that, you know, obviously it's the whole Romans one trajectory. We're literally thinking delusionally now. And there's so many people that think that way. There, there's almost not enough people that are standing up against that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Satan hates the innocence of children. He hates uh, the the foundations that God laid out in the in the foundations of Genesis. And he hates believers and he hates the Jewish people. So that's exactly what we're seeing the rise of all those things. 
there's definitely in the end times a collision of end times conditions and spiritual warfare. We should expect to see that. Um, but yeah, that, the gloves are off. There's there's no respect for the innocence of kids anymore. That's heartbreaking. And I, I pray for anybody who's raising kids right now. God will, God will see you through it. God will equip you. But it is a really, really scary kids. Oh, it is. It, it really is, Tom. And you know, the other thing is that when we think about uh, history and how we look back on Nazi Germany, Mm-hmm. And we have, and rightly so, looked back and, and called them an evil regime. When you think about the people of Germany uh, that went along with that regime, were okay with Jewish people being rounded up. No, no one fought their own government to keep Jewish people from being imprisoned, put in ghettos, put on trains, taken to concentration camps, being you know burned alive, gas, gassed in chambers, that type of things. But you think about what we're doing today. The German people never marched in parades for the right to kill Jewish people. But today we march in parades for the right to kill babies, for the Mm -hmm. rights to kill these young people. I think we are more culpable and and more guilty than perhaps even the German people that day because we voted it into law. Mm -hmm. And and we fight Mm -hmm. against it today. So obviously there's a great, you know, argument against abortion and people are fighting for that. And I applaud them and I join them in that. But as a nation, we have, we have welcomed with open arms, the brutal slaughter of the, the innocents uh, to the tune of about 3000 a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's terrible. Uh, I want to say this. I'm going to come back to that real quick. I want to thank Lisa D for putting in the link for prophecy pros. Not only do we have a blow, but we also had right in there. So some people said, what's that? It's the link, Lisa. Thank you for putting that in Thank you, Lisa. Uh, for everybody. I also need to say this. Um, appreciate your prayers. We've had some weird internet stuff going on here for a few weeks. Most of you mm. know uh, we've been working with a couple of different companies to get our things resolved. We were supposed to have everything resolved yesterday, and that didn't happen. So we're hoping by the end of this week. So I really appreciate your patience and your prayers as we work through these interesting dynamics. It, it takes, there's a lot of juice it takes to be able to run this whole thing uh, out, of, out of this. It, and, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more, I wish it was just as easy as a phone. Just get the phone and there you go. But it's, it's, there's a lot more to it than that. Okay, enough of that. So back to this, you know, Jeff, you mentioned so correctly we are, uh, we, not maybe the three of us, but America, there's people here who parade to, for as activists to uh, be able to have abortions. Um, and we watch what's happening within the courts. We watch what's happening in the schools, the politicians and everything. And I think we, we don't want to forget what happened to both ancient Israel and ancient Judah is Listen, not everybody was an evil person in Judah, in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. Jeremiah, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. There were faithful prophets and other people too. And um, not everybody was bad. There were people there that loved God, that preached righteousness. But overall, the system had gone bad. The kings had gone bad. The judges had gone bad. The princes had gone bad the religious leaders had totally capitulated and supported the child sacrifice back then. And and God judged them. And I think, you guys, sometimes there's a lot of people in in the church in America that think, well, God's not going to judge us because there's Christians here. Well, Mm -hmm. I I don't know. If you look at at the case of Judah and Israel, they— they were still judged. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. I believe we're going to be raptured before the tribulation begins, but I mean we're already watching the collapse of America. We we can mm-hmm. see it just with the the decay within America from the immorality and the perverse things that have come out of America and the wickedness and the evil and the murder and the the the, the letting criminals out of prison and and and. And the, and the crimes work against the victims, the system works against victims. It's absolutely terrible what, what happens. And we're watching this collapse on the inside to America, not unlike what happened to the Roman Empire. And yeah, there's Christians here. Yeah, we're proclaiming the truth. But that doesn't mean we're protected from, um, from mm-hmm. trouble. No, that's right. Jesus said in John 16, in the world, 
you will have tribulation, general tribulation, lower T uh, type of troubles that you'll have. You'll have them from within. You'll have them from without the world. Uh, you'll have them from those who would persecute uh, the church. And, you know, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like when you go into a house to remodel a, an old house or something and you tear off the sheetrock and you see the, the studs in there beneath my termites. And how is this house even still standing? I think that's where we are in America mm -hmm. right now. I believe we are yeah. under God's abandonment wrath uh, protocol, according to Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 18 through 32, Tom. And it is because of primarily the fact that we have rejected God as the creator. The very basic thing about God is that he is God. We've rejected that, as Todd, as Todd so appropriately pointed out, and we, we've attacked the book of Genesis, our origins, that can't, that couldn't have happened the way God said it happened, right? And so what happens is once you reject God as creator, you're left to your own speculations, and then eventually that leads to idolatry and sexuality and homosexuality, and then finally you end up, as you said, with a depraved mind where you're actually celebrating sin. You're celebrating the things that God calls evil. And as Isaiah 520 says, a woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Now we are the restraining influence. We're the salt, we're the light, we're here. And I believe just like Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, as long as Lot was in that city, the city wasn't going to get destroyed by God. But once he was taken out, mm -hmm. guess what happened? The wrath of God fell. Yep. Yeah. That, yep. That's my consistent prayer is that, like you said, Tom, there, there's no guarantee we won't face those things. There, there's millions of believers in the world right now being persecuted and martyred daily for their faith. So there's, we, we're not special just because we're American, but I do pray that because honestly, I'm surprised it's held, held together this long. <laughs> mm. So I do pray that God is using the salt and light of the church, the, the restraining influence of the Holy spirit in the church to hold that evil back as long as they can. Of course, America being the superpower, or I, I wouldn't even call it a superpower anymore, the, the Houston superpower. Um, but if if America collapses, obviously that ripple effect would affect everything. So I'm, I pray that what guts America ultimately is the rapture, but we're not guaranteed that. But one thing we can take some hope in is, you mentioned Jeremiah and, um, and Daniel. Jeremiah for prophet prophesied his whole life and calling his country to turn back to God. It never happened. He witnessed his country be destroyed. And of course, Daniel wasn't, was in prophet in exile the whole time. Uh, but there's one thing I, I find interesting in Jeremiah 29, he gives instructions to the captives who were taken to Babylon. And he basically says, I'm paraphrasing here, but trust the sovereignty of God and just keep moving forward, keep planting, keep harvesting, keep keep doing your thing, keep living your life. And I think that's a message along with the warnings that we that we share that that we got to share some of that hopeful side too. Like God does not want you to go hide out in a bunker somewhere and just wait for the rapture. We have people to reach and we have things to do. So let's get busy like like we never have before. It Amen, I love that. Every one of the prophets were faithful to keep pressing forward. Every one of them, including Jonah when he tried not to. And you know, the message <laughs> was right. judgment. The, the message was Assyria, you're all gonna die and go to hell. But you know what? They heard the message of hope and they repented. Imagine that mm -hmm. in heaven, we're gonna see some of those Assyrians. Isn't that bizarre mm -hmm. when you think about it? That mm -hmm. during that period, you know, before they, yeah. before, right. before they got really bad. Um, mm -hmm. But that is just amazing, that generation that repented to see them because they mm -hmm. heard the message of the hope because the people of God were faithful to continue to go forward. Mm -hmm. None of them yeah. held, hold up in a bunker. Mm -hmm. They tried, remember, they tried to get Jeremiah to hold, hold up in a bunker, but uh, mm -hmm. eventually he got fished out. He never stopped talking. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Hey, okay, everybody, we're going to take questions. Um, so send in the word QUESTION with all caps. Also, see some things on here, how to get a hold of both Todd and Jeff. The links are in here. Lisa has also put them up there. And, and then for Prophecy Watchers, several people have said that. Yes, conference is sold out in person in Orlando, but you can go to all of our sites, hopeforourtimes.com, or both Jeff's and Todd's or even Prophecy Pros, and there are links on all of our websites to go to the conference in Orlando and watch live stream. So you can do that. And uh, so it's pretty easy to access uh, the live stream. So uh, go for it if you can. Okay, question. Uh, oh, by the way, I have a new book out. Jeff, I'm so used to Jeff having books out all the time. And Todd <laughs> has books month. all the time. May, I'll never catch <laughs> either of you guys. You guys always got them, but I'm excited. I finally got a book out. <laughs> 
Tell us about it, man. What is it? Oh, it yeah. is. It's actually it's on pre-order, <laughs> and uh, and the through the publisher. It's called <clears throat> Marking the Masses, and I'm dealing with uh, the mark of the beast. So I deal mm. with technology, but also culture and where we are, why everything has gone bad, the chaos that's here, uh, what's necessary to get people to receive the mark of the beast, what are some mm. of the steps that are coming, what are the steps that have been made, and, uh, and so forth. So just started pre-order on it just nice. the other day. So I'm excited about awesome. it. I haven't had one out in a couple well, of years. Too. I can't wait to, to read can't it. Can't wait. I'll, yeah, same. I'll never be able to catch you guys. You guys are like a thousand books ahead of me, but hey, I'm glad I glad I finally <laughs> got somewhere. Um, but okay. Jeff, Jeff just won't slow down. He keeps cranking Jeff them out. Not, I can't Jeff has like 40 either. more coming this right next week. <laughs> <laughs> a question oh this comes from Jennifer Do you think America will see a nuclear attack? Hmm. That's a great question. Obviously, nothing like that is prophesied in Scripture, so we it's, it's pure speculation. Uh, to me, the thing that, that I write about in, in one of my books called The End of America, question mark, is that what will be America's demise? I think the final judgment on America is going to be the rapture. Uh, that's when God basically just pulls out the levee, he pulls out the dam, and all of a sudden in, inflows all the evil because the restraining influence is gone. I talk about in the book how that event is going to decimate this country uh, because not only uh, uh, for Christians being in every strata and every level and every area of, of our society, but also just the fact that the moral influence uh, is gone. It is completely mm -hmm. gone. So that's going to make us incredibly susceptible, incredibly vulnerable. And it's just like, you know, when there's an open door, the wolves come in, uh, that would be the opportunity for someone like China or North Korea or Russia or someone like that uh, to, to make its play uh, for America. That could result in sort of, some sort of attack, whether it's a nuclear attack, it's really, uh, we can't really say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I find it interesting also, <clears throat> Jeff, uh, regarding the rapture, imagine what's going to break loose after the rapture takes place. The, the, I was reading a report that um, th I think it's 31% of, only 31% of the people will resist a narrative, even if they know uh, it's bad for them. In other words, was it 59% will just go along with it? They were citing uh, studies that have been done throughout history, looking back at history, Nazi history, uh, psychological things that have been done to people and so forth. And so it's only a third of the people will resist. And then out of the third, how many of those are Christians? And so you imagine, right. uh, probably not very many, but nevertheless, the resistance is gone. And you mm -hmm. already have, uh, I guess it would be almost 70% of the people to actually go along with it. And imagine what it's going to mm -hmm. be like after the rapture takes place. Just, I mean, uh, that's a that's a great point. Like um, I was reading earlier today, just some, some, a little bit of the history of Bonhoeffer and, you know, you, Jeff was talking about Germany earlier and it's weird how in this entire country, it seems like there was just a handful of people that were standing up against the evil and not buying the narrative. And uh, it's just, you know, it's that on steroids now because people are controlled by fear instead of being controlled by God's word. They're controlled by the popular narrative rather than God's word. So it all goes back to that biblical illiteracy factor um, and, and the fact that there's this great falling away where there's less and less believers. We, we definitely don't have home field advantage anymore. So we got to kind of look at things through a new light and um, look at these things correctly and biblically. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned Bonhoeffer and you start looking at the churches that were part of the resistance in Nazi Germany and it was really a small percentage. Now that's disturbing because I would guess it'd be similar percentages now. And if we look mm -hmm. back at the last three years, you look at how many pastors just capitulated with everything. Well, let's just close mm -hmm. our doors. Don't talk on Bible prophecy. In fact, a lot of those churches are worse now when it comes to speaking on Bible prophecy and sin and judgment than they were before. It's just, no, now we need to get along. So you can already see it's pretty much this human problem to, for self, I'd rather just preserve myself, have a happy life than stand up for what is right, to press forward, to push against culture and society when it is 
obviously uh, going a wicked direction. So, man, just looking down the road, man, apart from yeah. without Christ working through people, look out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and we see that even right now, Tom, just the group think mentality and how easy people were were to be led during the last you know three years how they just capitulate because there was no recourse that there was no uprising there was no uh pushback uh on this thing and and also it just tells you too you know that scriptural principle that, that um james talks about how a little rudder uh can control a big ship you know a, so a tiny spark can cause a big fire a, a bridle controls a mighty horse you know obviously talking about speech in that passage but the principle is that the global elites will be a small group. I mean, this this 10-nation confederacy Mm -hmm. that Antichrist will lead is a small group, but they will control the whole world. Mm -hmm. And people will go along with it because guess what? If there's a digital economy and cash is no good, then you're just going to have to go along with it. So people Mm -hmm. will lose their power, and that's their goal, to take power from the people, uh, to put it in the hands of the global elite, and to make everybody, quote-unquote, equal or make it equitable for everyone. But in, in the end, really what it is, is just good old fashioned communism, i.e. slavery uh, to yeah. the state. And that's Antichrist's uh, goal because he wants to rule the world. Why? Because Satan is in him and he's wanted to rule the world for 6,000 years. It's always been his goal and he's going to get his goal realized through Antichrist. Yeah, he's going to get his goal realized. He's got it's going to be for a very short time. Okay, we have several questions that have come in. I've got to deal with this one because People are encouraging this person to spam their question. I'm reading, please don't spam your question. I saw it. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask both Jeff and Todd if they are familiar with it. Planet X. Um, you know, I've heard a lot about it. Do what what, you have any thoughts on that, either of you? Todd, you've written about some pretty wild things sometime and, they, and made some I, observations. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, you know, my spiritual warfare book, but... But even then, I, the, what I tried to highlight in there is just crazy stuff that's already in Scripture. <laughs> um, I've heard, you know, some of the stuff about Planet X, but and I don't know. I mean, we we know in the in in the tribulation period, there's a lot of astronomical things happen, things falling to Earth and that sort of thing. Um, but I personally try to steer away from anything that's too speculative. Um, and nothing against anybody who studies that and looks into those things and gets excited about them. But I just uh, my, my personal lane is just like what does scripture say so I'm, I'm, I kind of stick with that and just don't don't I don't stray too far from what scripture says or if I do I at least say it's sanctified speculation sanctified so. spe- like that I, I appreciate it <laughs> yeah. I feel the same way I, I remember looking at planet X actually several years ago this isn't the first time it's been around it's yeah. kind of like blood red moons not the first time they've come mm-hmm. around or that kind of thing it's like you, you can do a video and make something sound very uh, uh, you, very plausible, I guess. It's like, oh, this sounds really good. You know, I, I've, I, I don't see Planet X having uh, legitimacy to it, but there's people that do. So I, I'm going to stick with what I can tell within the Bible. I know there's signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, but I think those are ultimately going to be fulfilled during the tribulation period. And I also, you know, when I look at a passage like Jesus saying there'll be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, uh, you have Joel, you have Revelation chapter 6. I, what I've seen happen within the prophecy world mm-hmm. is verses like that have been taken and entire doctrines have been built upon those things to yeah. make them mean something that they don't mean. And you can always find something to, f- to fit. You know, you can mm-hmm. all squeeze this in here and that in sure. there. I think you need to be careful on some of those. I agree. Just, if, if you, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I was <laughs> going to say, it's just like people trying to identify Antichrist by using numerology, gematria, and to, to try to get their name to, to kind of work out to 666. Well, guess what? You know, Kennedy worked out that way. Reagan worked out that way. Clinton worked out that way. They figured out ways to make Obama like that. So, yeah, you're right, Tom. You can make things. You can force things to fit. You can put your foot into a shoe that's two sizes too small, but it's still not the right shoe, you know? But you can still make it fit. Yeah, yeah. and there and there's a lot of it. You know, this... <clears throat> this world attracts a lot of that, but it is a reminder. Look, let's stick with what the Bible does say, yeah. because with what the Bible does say, we can actually figure out a whole lot, and, yeah. and we can tell the climate 
of things and the direction that things are going. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another question. Uh, this is from Christine. She says, please tell me how people find any hope in a post-trip rapture. I was told they believe God will supernaturally protect us during the tribulation period. Jeff? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump into that. Yeah, so, so basically people who believe in a post-trip rapture believe that believers, that we will go through the tribulation. The, the fundamental problem you have with that um, not the least of which is the Bible doesn't teach that, is that God will pour out his wrath on his bride, that God will punish his bride with his wrath. And we see through the pattern of Scripture that he always removes his people before he drops his wrath uh, down on the planet. Did it with Noah, uh, did it with Lot, did it with Enoch before the wrath comes. Now, there will be saints in the tribulation, but it does not say that they will be protected. Now, the 144,000 will be protected with a seal mm -hmm. on their head, but there are martyrs in, in as early as the first set of seal, uh, the first uh, seal judgment. So we know that believers are not totally protected. Uh, later on, Revelation talks about the sun will no longer beat down on them. They'll no longer suffer. So they are not protected uh, from those things if they become Christians during the tribulation. But you're right. I think it's, it kind of stems from the fact, too, uh, and thank you for your question, but that the fact that, you know, people just think that we who believe in a preacher of rapture, we, we just want an easy life, you know, and and if, if our theology is not, you know, up to par, we'll just create a theology that gets us out of the hard stuff. Well, as Todd pointed out earlier, believers are going through stuff right now. So we're never promised that we'll not go through tribulation or through persecution, but we're not going to suffer God's wrath in the tribulation. Yeah. Therefore, that's one of the reasons why I, I vehemently reject the post-trib view. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Uh, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, if we're protected through the tribulation period, well, chapter 13, verse 7 says, Antichrist is given power over the saints. To kill mm -hmm. them. To make war, yeah. To, to make right. war. So yeah. it, it it doesn't apply, the Bible doesn't apply at all that there's going to be a supernatural protection over believers. I've even heard it taken where in Revelation chapter 6, uh, with the rider on the black horse, do not harm the oil or the wine, people have, have taken, this is another problem with taking things and making them fit. Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, mm -hmm. oil and wine is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, this is meaning God's going to protect the church because that's what's going on with Revelation 6 and the Black Horse. That's not what's going on with Revelation 6 and the Black Horse, but it really right. is, you know, keeping things in context is, is, a, is a wise thing to do. Okay, yeah. a very wise thing to do. Okay, I had this, this question in here. Oh, I'm going to find it. Uh, I can't believe I didn't. I lost it already. This is such a bummer. I'm going to find it. I've got to find it. <laughs> oh, I know it's it here. It deserves to be asked. I, it deserves <laughs> to be asked. Um, oh, no. Okay, here it is. It's actually more of a statement. It's from Susie about Antichrist. So uh, Susie says, she's responding to somebody else's <clears throat> question, Antichrist treaty is only with Israel, not the globe. Um, however... Uh, Daniel chapter 9 is very clear. Antichrist confirms a covenant with many. Uh, either mm -hmm. you want to explain that to help everybody on the chat uh, connect with, with what it is? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, it says it plainly there. It, it's between Israel and the many. And it doesn't say what the many is, but it's it's in the context of empires and nations and that kind of thing and of course you know there's been every, every president since nixon has tried to have some kind of a peace treaty so there's something there that that and, and even the wording in daniel 9 is he strengthens or confirms or pushes over to the finish line this covenant so it's something that perhaps has already been on the table and already been developed so um i think i think we're safe to say it is between israel and other nations you know it could be many people many nations but in any case it's between israel and other people israel and gentile people yeah and the many is it's just that it's many okay mm -hmm. uh here's a question from sandra Hahn. i have a friend who believes that israelites are the believers and gentiles are the unsaved how would she get that from the bible i don't know how she well, gets that from the Bible. Question. 
Well, pro- probably because, you know, in the Gospels, it talks, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, he made he made a distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles. And, um, you know, between, you know, when he, the lady came and wanted to, to Christ to heal him, and he said, I can't, you know, throw what is you know, holy to the to the dogs and that kind of thing. So there was a distinction made. Uh, also, um, and I believe it's in Matthew 18, where it talks about if someone doesn't respond to church, does when you treat them as a Gentile. So the word Gentile was sort of synonymous with unbelievers, but you got to read the whole Bible, is that yeah. when you get into the church, Gentiles become believers. In fact, that's exactly what happened uh, in the book of Acts. You had Amen. an explosion of Gentiles becoming uh, believers there to the point where Paul then wrote in, in Galatians 3, I think it's verse 26 or 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek. So in the body of Christ, you know, God doesn't see those distinctions. It's whoever believes, just like Abraham believed. If we have that kind of faith, uh, then we all become one. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. So uh, that's not really a a biblical doctrine we would embrace. Mm -hmm. Uh, Excellent answer. Question, I I dealt with this one from somebody (laughs) yesterday. I'll I'll just work with it again real quick. And Jeff, you were just there, you know, and you're going to Israel again soon. Both of you are with Olivier. I'm going here real soon. Uh, I just got back from Israel, says Kevin. Uh, The whole tour is very anti-Israel and pro-Palestine. They were saying that Israel is occupying the Palestine land. Can you please give your opinion on this? Can I go first? And and, and this is is what happens if you have a tour guide that is not part of Israel, and they're over there. You know, they're, they're just, they're anti, it's just like here in America. You have the right and you have the left. Over in Israel, you have those who are pro-Israel and those who are anti-Israel. And some of them come from a, a Christian background. Same thing with the pastor or the leader of the tour group. If you do not have a faithful pastor that believes the whole counsel of God's Word, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, you're going to get a spin that they want have and this is a reason why when you go to Israel I implore you make sure that you don't just see something on a trip and just sign up when you don't know the leader you Mm -hmm. don't know you're not familiar with the tour guy you're not familiar with uh, the guys who are going to be the men or some there's some really I've had some really good women tour guides over there too Hannah Mm -hmm. Kovner is fantastic so you got to make sure that you're led by the right group because um, I've done large groups before where I've had some tour guides that I've, I had, I had to kick off a tour guide one time and wow. replace them because wow. it was like, mm. no, we're not this anti-Israel, anti-IDF yeah. thing. That's, and it was on one of the buses. We had several different buses going on, found out what they were saying on the one said, no, we're, we're going to mm. put an end. So you got to make mm. sure you have the right <clears throat> pastors leading, the right teachers leading, the right tour guide. Mm-hmm. And. And the way to do that is, well, you know, you hear, you, you can hear us. You know, you can hear the things that all, <laughs> all three of us say. Yeah. That's one yeah. way of, of, of picking a, a right tour. And, yeah. um, or the colleagues, that, the, the guys that we talk to. Yeah, yeah and there, there's a ton of <laughs> believers from all stripes who don't even realize that there, there's this dichotomy of between there's a whole swath of Christendom, so to speak, that doesn't realize the diff, the the two programs, God's program for Israel and God's program for the church. And that Israel being born in 1948 was literally prophesied in scripture and it's part of God's plan. There's people that don't teach that at all and teach against it. And they're in error. They, they, they have to gut large portions of scripture. So yeah, I would, that's, I would echo that. Just make sure whoever you're going with, holds to that view that Israel is part of God's plan still and that Israel becoming a nation again is prophesied and that we're we're expected to see all these things in the end times. Yeah, and that's really the point is that if if you see and you can obviously that scripture has been fulfilled with Israel becoming a nation again, that that settles the issue that they're not an occupier. It's their land. Yeah. God promised them their land, and and if anyone's occupying it, it's the Palestinians. So, uh, and, and Israel e- even is in, in occupying all the land that God had promised to them right now. So there's just a, a tiny portion of that. So it's really the the flip side of it. So take basically yeah. whatever you hear in the media and the narrative and flip it on its head, and you'll probably find the truth. A- a- amen. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining me. Okay, we're all going to be prophecy watchers this coming week. It's sold out in person, but you can watch online. I've already mentioned you can go to any of our websites. You can get the info there 
for how to register. Um, you guys, you have any final closing thoughts for everybody? You know what? I'm I'm just living on on excitement right now <laughs> because as Todd and I travel around and we're with you, Tom, every time we're with you, it's always great. But listen, God is doing a great thing right now, and He is raising up people. and And you're listening and you're watching right now. You're part of the solution, by the way. You're part mm-hmm. of the remnant that God is raising up. So I just want to applaud you and thank you for being a part of what uh, the Lord is doing here in the last days. Yeah. Amen. Todd, I echo, I echo that, and also just just remind people: don't forget. God is still on the throne. You know, no matter how crazy it gets out there, God is still on the throne. He's sovereign. He's in control. You're here at this very moment on purpose and for a reason. So lean into that. Trust him daily. Keep your mind on him and you'll be kept in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. And if you want to know where Jeff and Todd are going to be, their info is on their websites. They both have their own websites, plus Prophecy Pros. And I get questions all the time, Todd, from people saying, how can you get prophecy to kids or to a youth group or something like that? You guys travel together, you do that. Todd, you have a ton of study material mm-hmm. just for kids. So people can go to, to Todd Hampson and, or Prophecy mm-hmm. Pros or whatever and get all that. Yeah, I think they can go to ToddHampson.com and see all the books. There's a couple kids' books and a lot of books with illustrations and that sort of thing. So, yeah, we're even even if the Lord doesn't return in our lifetime, which would be mind-blowing if he didn't because everything's converging right now, we want to equip the next generation Amen. so that we don't skip another generation of teaching people about Bible prophecy. Amen. Faithful until the end. Thanks for joining yeah. me, guys. Listen, thank you, everybody. And... Uh, Talk to you tomorrow if you can join me, and please pray for our internet. Man, we are all over the map with it, and uh, it's just the way it's just the way it is. We're going to get it resolved because God is on the throne. But I hope you can join me tomorrow live on Wednesday, live on the app. God bless you.